It's time to play Wordle. Welcome to Wordle Picks My TBR. This weekend, I am going to play Wordle, and each word is going to decide what book I read. Wordle is a game that became really popular, and I'm going to link below the website because I know when I was first introduced to it, I was so confused. I ended up downloading an app on my phone and then realized it's not an app, it's a website. They were bought by New York Times, so it is a New York Times free game. So I wanted to let you know what Wordle is if you've never heard of it or just haven't played it. This challenge was originally created by Books and Lala. Her video will be down below. Now I want brush, so let's try brush. No. <laughs> okay, we have an H in the word though. Um, so I was looking at my books behind me and just trying to strategize what titles I want. And this weekend is also the start of the tour.comathon, so I want to read something for that. What has an H in it? Hmm. Let's try child because I do have a memoir that could work for this. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, I thought it was it. I thought I got it. I thought I got it in two. I didn't, but it starts with a CH, so alright. I'm gonna try cheap. I actually hope that's not the word because Okay, it's not, but we have a C-H-E. I guess it's check. No. I'm close, though. C-H-E. <laughs> uh, I have no clue. Is it cheek? Oh. That's not fun. It is. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Well, let me check to see if I have a book with cheek in the title. If not, we're just going to go f yesterday's. Wow. Um, because if it were check, I could just reread check, please. Which would be nice for me. Or read another kind of book, but. Let me look through my TBR and then I will return. I found two books and I'm going to go with a funny approach for this because I need to read this book. I need to read it. It is called Gert Garibaldi's Rants and Raves One Butt Cheek at a Time. I have to read it. I It's calling to me. With a title like that, I know it's going to be probably really bad because it came out in 2007 and I'm gonna get the e-copy on my kindle and read it. If the word is cheek I'm going all out so I will read that <laughs> and then I have a novella on Hoopla called Cheek to Cheek and it's 20 pages so I'm also going to read that one but here's the thing my library card is expired. Yes I should have renewed it when I went the last time. Did I do that? No. So I'm gonna go over to the library. The problem with this challenge is like I could grab so many books but since tomorrow's Sunday and Easter they're gonna be closed so I might have to switch this over to the week so that I can maybe go back to the library. So my weekend reads are cheek to cheek and one butt cheek at a time. I just finished up a video, which is really great, and I went to the library. There was an Easter egg hunt going on outside. The library was open, but oh my god, I don't know how I forgot that there was going to be an Easter egg hunt because the library did advertise it, but I was able to renew my card. I got a hold. So let's talk. I am participating in reading sprints right now. Julia from Pages and Pens is doing a 12-hour reading sprint. So I just finished the book that I was currently reading. Game on. Oh my god. I just finished the book I was currently reading. Game on. I'm so happy I finally finished it. And that vlog should be up above because I'm hoping to post it before this video. So I have two ebooks. One butt cheek at a time I ended up getting on Amazon. And then off of Hoopla, I'm going to read Cheek to Cheek. Cheek to Cheek is the 
shortest book. It's 20 pages, so I'm going to get started on that one and I will come back with my thoughts. Hello, it is 10 p.m. and I finished my first book. It was cheek on cheek. It was 25 pages and I'm confused. So I did some research and this was 1.5 of this novella series. So this is following the villain from the first novella and this is just a small companion novella. I'm just left really confused and I had to look up some Goodreads reviews to kind of find out what actually happened. So this is following Nadine. She is in a dance class. It's like a ballroom dance class and this guy she was seeing, Matt, proposes to another girl in the middle of class. So she didn't really deal with that situation. She just hops on the train to find a new guy to replace that. The problem with a book that is only 25 pages is that you're not really getting all of the character development or getting to know this character. I do just wish this was a little bit longer. It should have been 100 pages at least because I was just super confused. The concept was weird because there is obviously the whole plot where she's finding new guys because the guy proposed to somebody else and she starts trying to date her dance instructor, Derek. And then for some reason she starts talking to this guy, Eddie. I don't know what happened there. The conflict I had a problem with and was just most confused about was that her dad calls her to tell her that him and her mom are getting divorced because they were in an open relationship. He's apparently gay and this isn't working out. It was weird. I don't know. There's nothing leading up to that. There's no foreshadowing or anything like that. And then it just kind of doesn't get brought up again because she's like, um, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was weird. Luckily, there was no homophobia or anything like that because she actually says that her sexuality is fluid and she would get with a girl, but she didn't fancy any of the girls in her dance class. Now, I guess he's just questioning, which is totally cool. I love a questioning character, but in the end, this just needed to be longer and more fleshed out because it was an interesting concept and it is about ballroom dance. It's actually set in Australia. The author is Australian, so we do have Australian characters and slang and stuff like that, but I just wish it, it would have been longer, honestly. The whole reason this is called Cheek to Cheek is because it's a dance, which I didn't know about. I'm actually gonna go look it up because I'm interested, but I thought this was okay. I would give it like a two or three star. It wasn't that fantastic. From the Goodreads reviews, the fans of this author really enjoyed it and gave it five stars. So I think if you're a fan of this author, maybe you'll like it. And if you like dance, you might like this as well. I don't know much about ballroom dance. So obviously this type of book is not catered to me, but that was my first book on the list for Cheek in the title. And now I started <laughs> one butt cheek at a time and I haven't even gotten past the first page and already it's a trip uh, because it actually sounds like Angus thongs and full frontal snogging. That is the vibes I'm getting from this book. The first chapter is called The Butt Cheek Philosophy of Life. It says, survival isn't about putting a foot in front of your trunk and shuffling along. Nope. It's about moving the butt cheeks and getting them into the pants of life. It's my philosophy of attacking life, or more accurately, surviving life's attacks on me. Has been since I was little when my tush was an adorable set of twin dumplings. So forever and ever, a woman. I'm gonna go read this and I'll be back. <laughs>
Hello, it is Sunday, it's Easter, and it is time to play Wordle for the last time. I decided I'm just going to do two Wordles, and then if I enjoy this concept, maybe I'll do it again because it is pretty fun. I haven't read much else of One Butt Cheek at a Time, so I will get to that today. I also still need to edit my podcast episode for tomorrow, so I need to do that. I was just out getting some stuff for Easter, and uh... I'm gonna go and play Wordle now because I've been waiting to do it all day and it's almost noon. I really hope that today's word is better than yesterday's just because I want to read off of my April TBR. Let's play some Wordle and just ignore the mess on my bed. Let's start with heart. Okay, no, we have an E and an A. Um, okay. Okay, well, I want spade, so spade. So I think they have used spade before, so maybe that doesn't work. Oh, okay. We're getting somewhere here. Uh, P, A. I'm literally looking at all my books over here. Let's try peace. I don't have any books with that. Okay, well, good. That's that's not it. Um, Why am I feeling apple? No, but I'm close. I don't think I've ever heard this word in my life before. It might be amble, and if it's amble, I'm kind of fucked because I don't think there's any, yep. I don't think there's any book with amble in the title, so uh, that sucks for me. <laughs> Hi, editing me here to let you know I'm going to be saying amble throughout this whole video, even though in my mind I'm saying ample, but with my accent, I'm saying it wrong. I do know it's ample, not amble, but for some reason I did not say the correct word. But it's ample, not amble. Back to the video. Okay, so today's Wordle word was amble. I have done my research and the book I have is Amble Hills Creamery Secrets and Stories from Brooklyn's Favorite Ice Cream Shop. I don't know if I'll be able to get this book because I am not in New York, but I'm gonna just look it up because it looks cool. There's also Amble Delights, which is erotica, <laughs> which I'm fine with, but I don't really know if I am in the mood to read that right now. <gasps> Hoopla has it. Oh my God, yay. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Okay. Amble Hills Creamery is the next book on my TBR. And then I'll end out this video. Ooh, I'm excited. This this seems fun. This is actually a book that I would like to read. I don't know if it's a cookbook, but it just says secrets and stories from Brooklyn's favorite ice cream shop. So I'm going to hit borrow and I will see you once I have probably completed, oh, hopefully completed, but sh the butt cheek book. <laughs> oh, oh, good. oh man. <laughs> Hello, I have a reading update for you. Last night I finished One Butt Cheek at a Time and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. This really felt like a book I would have read in high school. I could have related to the main character because she is a sophomore in high school and it is basically just going through her sophomore year of high school up until homecoming and I was just confused sometimes. It is a stream of consciousness, which I totally like and I'm fine with, but there's no plot or anything. There's no catalyst. There's literally nothing leading up. So I wasn't really invested in reading the book because one, I wasn't invested in the character and I also wasn't invested in the plot. And I'm someone who loves character-driven books, but the character has to give me something to root for. So I want to pick up the book and be like, oh, I want to hear more about what is going to happen in this situation. But there was just little situations that I didn't feel a connection to, which 
is fine, but it did remind me of some of my high school days. Uh, <laughs> good or bad. So I was right to compare it to Angus Thong's and Full Frontal Snogging because it feels a lot like that. So you can tell that this is going to be a series of us just following this character throughout high school and there were some things that I enjoyed, so let's talk about those. I liked that it was sex positive and that it wasn't like a stereotypical YA book that you would have read in 2007. This actually follows Gert who has parents who are older. Her dad is in his 60s, her mom is in her late 40s, and so she talks about how it feels being the youngest with older parents, which I don't think is the case for many YA characters that I have read from. I have never read a perspective from a teenage character who is living with older parents, and so her perspective on things are so different because she doesn't really go to her parents to learn about sex and to learn about certain things, and so she kind of makes some mistakes along the way which are funny. Some of it was funny, but I also just kind of felt like there was not much going on that I could root for, but she actually gets to learn things in health class which I really enjoyed because if there is a 16 year old picking up this book they are going to learn a lot about the AFAB body and I thought that it was really well done in that aspect. It was triggering <laughs> whenever we're talking about puberty that's just something that's going to be hard for me to read, so I did skim some of that, but I'm glad that it was included as sex is still a taboo subject, but in the 2000s it was very taboo. I liked to see that there was a lot of sex positivity from her health teacher, and her health teacher is teaching a lot of the things that I actually didn't learn until I was in college, which really just shows how screwed up our sex education system is. However, I just really appreciated that because if there's a kid who is picking up this book, they're going to learn a lot that they're not learning in school. So there were really good positives and I enjoyed that. There is a gay character and I was really nervous for that representation because it was the 2000s. If you know the 2000s, really was heavily built on gay stereotypes of just thinking any feminine guy is gay. Having an Achillean romance was really nice to see and that there was no gay best friend stereotype, though there are some comments that Gert makes to Adam referencing that he has good fashion choice and he could help her with fashion and also that he is more cleanly. There's a whole part of the book where Gert learns about tweezing because everybody in school is doing it and there's a whole fiasco with that and her just learning about her body. And I thought that it was okay. And now on to my last and final read which is Amble Hills Creamery. And I started it this morning and I'm excited. I think it's a cookbook actually and so I'm interested to read it. So I'm going to try and read more of Amble Hill's Creamery today and I will be back with my update. Let's wrap things up. I finished the Amble Hill's Creamery book. It was a cookbook about the Amble Hill's Creamery in New York and it starts off just talking about the origin, how it started, and then it goes into how to make the ice cream and how they make their certain flavors. And I thought it was really interesting. This is the second food related book that I've read this year, so I feel like I'm going to start reading more food books, which I don't mind. I've actually had a lot of fun reading cookbooks and this actually made me want to go and visit this place whenever I'm in New York. So overall this is just a, an ice cream cookbook and I thought it was fun. I've never actually learned how to make ice cream and after this I kind of want to make my own, but they use a special tool which is a hand cranker. However, the cookbook actually gives you resources of where to find things and I thought that was really cool. So if I were to ever invest in a hand cranker I would get one to make ice cream because it's really not that hard as you learn about it. I like how they shared different recipes and there are actually illustrations including some 
getting to know the employees, you're getting to know the mascots that they've created. As I've never heard of this creamery before, I really enjoyed reading the recipes because there's some backstory to it. So they'll say why they made this flavor, how they landed on a title, and so forth. The one recipe that I haven't stopped thinking about because I just thought it was genius is the s'mores ice cream that they have and they actually toast marshmallows and you can smell it throughout the whole store and I thought that was cool. They also made this kid friendly including a story for each section. So each section of the cookbook starts off with a story and then it just travels throughout. So each chapter you're reading another section of the story and I was super invested in this because it is about the characters of the creamery getting this magical goblet that just has ice cream all the time and there is one character who just loves ice cream so much and he really wants this magical goblet and I was so invested in this story. <laughs> I was so invested in the story and I actually like that to break up the cookbook because then I'm not just reading recipe after recipe after recipe. I'm new to reading cookbooks front to back so I actually really liked having that divide where I'm not just reading recipe after recipe after recipe. They also add to some of the recipes for ways that you can have your kids interact with it. For instance, there's the cookies and cream recipe and they say that you can have the kids smash up the cookies. So if you have children and you want to make ice cream, I would recommend this. I thought it was really good. My only criticism would be that I wish that I had more of the origin story. Like I just wanted to know all about this creamery. I did kind of but I was just curious. I believe this was published in 2014 so I would like to see more books about this creamery. If there was a nonfiction book about it I would read it because I want to just know more about it. I'm gonna go and research a little bit about it because I'm curious but overall I really enjoyed this and it was such an interesting read. I have never read an ice cream cookbook before and I just want to read more. Hoopla has so many and I'm just about to read a bunch of them. I'm reading a lot of food related books and I'm hoping to read one for May. So that was Wordle Picks My TBR. Thank you so much for watching. If you stayed until the end let me know in the comments what your favorite ice cream flavor is. I would love to know. Mine is mint chocolate chip. I really love it. It's a good one and apparently it is the most popular flavor in Pennsylvania. I looked up like an article. I'll try and link it down below. That's it for me today. I read three books in this video and I had a lot of fun. So if you want to see a part two of me having Wordle pick my TBR, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, feel free to hit subscribe and you can join me for more reading vlogs like this. I have a lot planned for May so feel free to stick around so you don't miss out. If you want to see more bookish things from me you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks and I have a podcast called Reader Rambles. It is a weekly podcast for book lovers where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. Episodes go out to the public every Monday but if you become a patron you'll get them on Mondays and you can join my bi-monthly book club. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Bye.